Secretary Clinton calling for $275 billion in new federal spending to fix bridges, roads, and tunnels. It's all part of a month-long focus on job creation. But it's not just Clinton. Other candidates are also pitching their plans to create jobs and bring business back to the United States. With, with more on this, we want to bring in another kind of job creator, Bennigan's chairman and CEO, Paul Mangimile. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. The CEO of legendary restaurant brands, Bennigan's. Thanks for joining us, sir. Oh, you're welcome, Maria. And before we start, I just have to tell you what a great job you and Neil did with the Republican debates. Very classy, very professional. Thank Excellent you. Excellent job. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let me ask you about the state of small business today, because what we keep hearing from managers of businesses and, and, and certainly uh, managers of, of large and small, that Obamacare and costs and regulation have really hampered their ability to grow. How do you see it running in such a successful business as Bennigan's? Well, you know, we have Bennigan's. Bennigan's on the fly in Steak and Ale, and the competitive environment has never been tougher, let alone the increased regulation that we see that coming from all kinds of different mandates, whether it's Obamacare or it's uh, overtime for managers or it's uh, the you know, minimum wage debate that rages on and on. Uh, a lot of people just don't understand that a small business owner is dealing with a very slim profit margin. You know, a lot of people just focus on the bigger names like the McDonald's of the world or the Panera Breads of the world. But how about the franchisees that buy into your brand and are representative and are independent contractors and they deal with very, very slim margins. And as the government puts more regulation, it's not just the regulation piece, it's the cost of compliance that eats into our profit margins and makes it more and more difficult for us uh, to, to, to generate the profitability necessary to continue to grow the brands and to provide jobs for our employees. I mean, even when we're talking about the minimum wage, I mean, no one to put forth a notion that any of us in retail do not want to pay our people that are the heart and soul of our brands a fair wage is ridiculous. Mm. It's just a, the way to do it. It's, it's not unilateral. It should be a dialogue. Right. And you just have these mandates and going from $9 to $10 to $15 to $19 an hour. I mean, if anybody does the math, I mean, that's a $40 a year job. Right. Uh, the small business owner can't absorb that. So on, the one, on one hand, you've got higher regulation. On the other hand, you've got higher minimum wage pressure coming at you. I mean, that's Correct. obviously not going to be Correct. an incentive for you to create new jobs. As, as a business, how many employees do you have at Bennigan's, Paul? There's about 10,000 altogether. 10,000, um, wow. Because uh, I know for and small businesses. That's all employees it, and managers. Right, and, and if you have more than 100 employees, and, and part of the rule is also 50 employees, but that changes in 2016, if you have 100 employees, you are forced to offer health care benefits. Or that's pay correct. A fine. And, and, well, and, and then there's the joint employer debate uh, with the franchisor and the franchisee that's raging as well, right. where um, there's, a, there's a discussion going that the franchisor should be as responsible as the franchisee for their administration of their labor or their wages or their overtime. And that is just a crazy notion, and it takes away the very fabric of providing um, the franchisee an opportunity to be uh, in business for themselves, but not by themselves. Yeah, let me, let me bring in my colleague notion. here, Sandra Smith, because we're, we're all talking about sure. this. We understand the, the plight, Paul. Sandra. Hey, Paul, well, you mentioned the uh, debates, and this was a huge talking point during the day, ta debate, taxes, regulation. Uh, who do you, as the head of a large business and, and somebody who's employing thousands of people, who do you see as the most business-friendly candidate right now? I'm going to take this a different direction. I'm going to go with a ticket. Uh, because I really like uh, John Kasich and, and his experience, and I really like uh, Marco Rubio and his energy and his knowledge of the working man. I mean, many times he's talked about his own parents that came over from Cuba when he was a kid so, and worked their way through, and they were in the hospitality business. So I think they have a real, uh, both of them together make a very pow powerful dynamic to, to address um, the uh, the wage situation, to address Obamacare, to address the regulation, the overregulation, to address bigger government, to simplify tax codes, to reduce corporate taxes. So I think the, the power of both of them together um, is not only overwhelmingly positive for business, but I love Marco Rubio because he's so thirsty, he's perfect for Bennigan's 
because we have great beverage programs, <laughs> great beer. We've got that great food. Cute. I just want him, I, I want to satisfy his thirst in our restaurants. That is very cute because he kept picking up, picking up the water. Um, real quick, Paul, can you characterize business right now? What are you seeing out there in terms of spending, uh, consumers? Well, I, I see the uh, consumer confidence waning. Uh, I, I, I just love the way uh, pundits are going along and, and talking about everything's just rosy and great. And the Fed now is thinking about uh, raising the, the interest rates. Um, I, I wish they would talk to somebody <laughs> that's actually working out in the field, whether it's in hospitality or any kind mm -hmm. of retail. I mean, disposable income has not really gone up. No, Maybe wages not at have. All. But the, but the costs have gone up. I mean, the cost of housing, the cost of cars, the cost of groceries. Um, and so that affects the disposable dollar that's going to be used for eating out and enjoying yourself in a casual dining environment like Bennigan's or Steak and Ale. So, so, so you don't think um, they should be raising rates in the face of a slowdown? No. No, I don't. I think, and again, it, you don't just take it from $7 an hour and then move it all the way 15. to what, what they're saying, 10 15 $19 an hour. It's just getting ridiculous. Uh, and they're not looking at the full impact. If anybody did something called a pro forma, anybody did something called a, a profit and loss statement, and they actually put these costs into um, their businesses, they'll see, uh, the, these politicians will see that there's very slim margins that it brings to people but are providing these jobs into a loss category, now closing those businesses. So when you're asking me about what I see for the future, I see a lot of dark space, you know, businesses going under over the next 18 to 24 months. Yeah. If there isn't anything done to address these mandates and the, and the compliance of the regulation, that's going to hurt our businesses. Really important comments from you on the front lines of, uh, of business. Paul, we appreciate your insights this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you Pleasure. soon. Thank you. Paul Menjameli there, uh, the CEO of Bennigan's. Turning to the holiday.